So, uh, I'm happy to be, to be here. I'm Jakob Spalletti. I'm the founder and CTO of Nefila. We build uh, Django applications in uh, every day. And I've been working with Django since 2009. And I'm developer of quite a few Django applications and Django CMS core developer. I'm also a beer enthusiast, as you can see from my, from my shirt. So if I'm not uh, at a keyboard, you will probably find me in some pub having some, some beer. Uh, so, real-time web. For some time now, uh, the web is not more the usual request-response cycles over and over and over. And it's much more uh, complex and rich. And to achieve this, you have to lose a lot of tools, which is really nice. The little nerd inside us is very happy about using uh, new tools. But in the end, you, you end up uh, eating a complexity wall you, where you, you're using a lot of different languages, different infrastructure, and keeping all these things together, it can be uh, quite complicated. So uh, why not doing the, the Django way, at least the, this, this part? There are a lot of tools in Python and also in other languages that solves this problem already. But if you are working with, with Django, uh, having a, an integrated solution would be really nice. So, channels. Channels has been created to go beyond the usual synchronous uh, way of the working of, of Django, which only deals with HTTP request response. And it's been adopted, uh, it's been developed outside of a core, and then it's been adopted by the Django project as an official uh, Django, um, Django application. And uh, Channels is a framework to deal with asynchronous protocols, basically, not, not web, uh, uh, not web specific. So, uh, WebSockets is obviously a first class citizen inside Channels because the obvious first way to interact with, with asynchronous uh, protocols for, from a web development perspective. But it can, use, can be used for any kind of protocols, boats, IoT, or whatever you, you may need. And, uh, but for the rest of the talk, I assume uh, uh, WebSockets because it's the more natural uh, environment for us. So, while I was preparing this, this talk, I have the nice uh, news of Channels 2, which has been released two weeks ago. And it scared me a bit because uh, Channels 2 changed a lot of things, and so I decided to stick with Channels 1. So all my code and examples will be for, for Channels 1. I'll talk briefly about the changes in Channels 2. And the reason why I still stick to version 1 is because I live-tested the version one, and the sample application is actually a, um, a reduced version of something we have built for our clients. And channels two still not have 100% of the channels one features. And in the end, I had little time to write all the talk and all the examples for, for channels two. But this doesn't really matter uh, at, this, at this stage, really, the, the version you're using. So, the, this is the, the talk outline. I will briefly introduce the, um, the concepts of, of channels, which are different uh, than, than the Django ones. And if you don't know Django, that doesn't really matter. I will make a few references to, to Django, but channels is, is not really... It uses Django, but it's not completely, so to speak, completely tied to, to Django, uh, at least at a code, uh, for code matters. Then I will show this example application, and then we will go down to the code and see how it works, to so see how you can build your own uh, real-time applications. And then we will have a few, um, uh, a few highlights of channels too. So, what's channels? Uh, channels is based on channel, which is uh, first in, first out, at most once queue. Uh, it's important, the, the, at most once, its concept is very important because you are not guaranteed that your messages are delivered. And this is basically uh, for performance reason and also for the use cases that a real-time application has. Um, and mess, uh, channel 
is a channel, is a, to uh, write and read messages. Uh, you, have, you obviously have, sorry, you have producers, which are the protocol server and the consumers, and are read by the consumers. In this context, let me simplify a bit things. Asynchronous means even driving. So you have, um, sorry, you, you have events that arrives to the protocol server somewhere, are generated and put into the, into the channels, and something will pick these events, as some messages, according to the events. Asynchronous code is more complex to, to understand, because it's, it's non-linear, obviously, and the mm, choice that channels one made was to hide the asynchronous part. Channels works asynchronously, but you don't, you don't see it, you don't write asynchronous code. This has been a little changed in, uh, in channels too. Uh, the whole um, channel concept uh, has been, I'll say, uh, freezed under this SGI uh, protocol, which is uh, basically the specification that brings the asynchronous uh, uh, world into the, the whiskey. So it's, it's like a, a version of, a, a synchronous version of, of whiskey. Uh, the version 1 was built for channels 1 and the version 2 for channel 2, quite obviously. And version 2 is much simpler to implement. That's one of the reasons for the channels 2 approach. The protocol server is the thing that speaks to the network. So it implements the ASCII uh, specification and it's the bridge between the network and the application. For example, Daphne, which is the mm, reference implementation, speaks WebSockets and so re mm, takes the data from, from the network, from WebSocket network and put into the channels. And it's, uh, it's its responsibility to create the channel. So every protocol server can define its own channels. Uh, then you have routing, because when things come in, you want many different consumers or many different functions to be called on these on this messages. And so the routing is a way that you can uh, say to the channels how to route the messages to the different consumers according to, to, some, to some properties, which are called filters. And so, in a way, it's similar to Django URL Conf. If you are familiar with it, you put the URL, you put some parameters in that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then there are the consumers, which are really the parts you are going to, to write. Uh, it's the code. It's your code, basically. Uh, the role of consumers is read messages from from channel, do something, and write messages on the on the channel again. They are similar in some way to the Django views, but the point is that you put messages in, um, in the channel. You don't return anything. You just write something in the channel, and so messages are moved around both in the input and, and output. And then you have the front end. Obviously, WebSocket, if you use WebSocket in a browser, you will have to write some JavaScripts. And Channels ships a very lightweight library to help with this, but you can use whatever WebSocket client you want to achieve this. And so, enough theory. Let's see some, something in action. I created this, this application, which is very stupid application. It's a simplified version of something we, beat, we built for, uh, uh, for our clients. And... Uh, the logic is very, yeah, it's not super, uh, super fancy, but allows you to, to get a bit of how the channels work. So I implemented three features, like call this poor folks Google Docs. You can count how many active users you have currently on the platform. You know uh, which document has been opened for by which user in which state, so you, you can actually do some concurrency checks. And you get browser notification when, where something uh, happened. And as I don't want to sacrifice kittens to live demo god, I prepared this video. In this video, you see on the left, sorry, 
Yeah. Okay. On the right, you have Lila, and on the left, you will have Fry. They're both using the same, uh, the same application. And with this counter, you will see the number of active users on the, on the platform. So at the start, you have only Lila working on it, and so you have only one user. Then at some point, Fry will, will join. This is the notification um, message that tells you to, if you want to enable it. You have to write some very brief code to, to ask the browser to, uh, to, to allow this. And, oops. One. Let's try login again. And you can see here the number has been increased to, to two. The document has this green label. At the moment, the labels are lower green because no document has been opened. Now if I open this document and the label, this label become yellow and you have the Fry name on top of this. Now Fry is going to edit the document and the label will become red. Fry will make some some changes, but Lila at this point knows that Fry is doing something. Then Fry saves the document, and you have this notification here. Lila wants to check what Fry has written, and Fry gets this notification that Lila, someone has opened the, the document. And that's all for this, for this sample application. Oop. Okay. So, um, let's see some, some details. Uh, these are the three main things you are going to, to work on when you create a channels application. And channel layers is basically the configuration. You just specify the, the backend, which is the message uh, storage. And Redis is basically the default, the recommended, but you have many others and you, or, and you can write your own. And then you have the routing, which as we have seen here is uh, basically, the URL conf of, of channels. The project routing is very, is very simple. You're basically going to include the routing of the different uh, applications you want. And, oops, okay. And this is the application routing, the one I included up there. It's, it's pretty dense, but in the end, uh, you map all the, all the consumers, which are these this classes, to, uh, to a channel, which is usually included uh, as an attribute, provided as an attribute by the, by the consumer, and this filter. Uh, WebSocket has only path as, as filter, but you, other protocols may specify others, like, I don't know, if you have an email protocol server, you, you may have the address and whatever you, you want. And with the usual regexp, you can uh, parse the, the the path and get get more arguments to pass to the to the consumer, and you have this as root or root class to map the the consumers to the to the routing. And now let's go to the consumer, which are actually the the interesting part of the of building a channel application. Consumer for WebSocket because at this point you you really need to know the the protocol you are using are something like, like this. I'm using this JSON WebSocket consumer because it's, uh, yeah, it deals with all, a lot of low-level stuff, so you, you can express much more clearly what, what you want. And then you have the, these three methods, which are, which are the events that are exposed by, by channels. And you, you have at least to implement one of these, otherwise your consumer won't get any event but you can implement anything you want according to, to your needs. And then you have others like this one, which will provide you uh, data about the session and the user picked from, from, Django, uh, from Django. So the first thing we have seen is how to count user counting. So how we do this? Uh, the idea is that whenever a user entered the application, it the, it opens a WebSocket onto a, an endpoint, and this triggered the connect event. 
uh, when uh, the connect event is, is triggered on, the, on, on this specific endpoint, I get a message here, and so I can pick the user, increment the user counter in some way, and then report back to the user how many users there are. Uh, but I'm not just sending the number to, of the users to the user who just connected, but to all the users in this specific group. So all the connected users to that, that are map, map, sorry, in this group will receive this, this counter. When it disconnects, I obviously decrease the number of users. When a message is emitted, the browsers receive it, and thanks to the, to the channel's JavaScript library, I can just create this bridge, connect to the endpoint, and I start receiving messages through this listen function. Whenever a message arrives, I know it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the kind of messages with at the user number, and then I update this, uh, the DOM. Now we are going to check how many, we don't want to know not only how many users there are, but also uh, what they are doing on, on, our, on our application. And so we have a bit more complex uh, status because we have the status of a single document and we also want to inform the, the, the users which, have, which are on the homepage, on the dashboard of our application. So this is a bit more complex, but the idea is that when a user connect and message is received, I update the status for my document, taking into account the slug, for example, and the phase, which is really if it's opening in read or edit mode, and then, once I have registered this, I prepare this message, which are uh, just dictionaries, and I send to all the groups, all, to all the users, sorry, uh, attached to the group named after the slug of the document. So these me messages will be sent to all the people, or to all the users connected to, the, uh, to my document, whether in read or edit mode. But then I want also to update the users which are on the dashboard, because they want to know which uh, documents are opened. And so I, had, I sent to this second group, which is, this is just an attribute for, for convenience. And so when a user connects to a document, it updates all the connected users, both the ones on the current document and the, and the document, and the others to the, uh, attached to the list. And this is the second consumer for the users connected to the, to the list. This is basically the, this, previous, this previous version here, just expanded. I just cycle through all the documents. This is Django OEM. This is basically, I think, the only line of Django code in this, in this slides. And I create this dictionary as, uh, separating users according to the phases, etc., and I send to the same group. Thus, in the front end, I listen to the messages on the, on the new path, so on a new endpoint, and according if I, if I have a single document of ORM in list, I update the DOM by changing colors and doing some, some stuff. The third one is uh, the browser notifications. So, we, people works with, um, with documents updated, and. Uh, users may want to be notified of any changes going on. For this, I use a, a, a higher level uh, API provided by Channels 1, which is no longer in Channels 2, but I think it's nice, so I, I decided to, to show it anyway. And we'll, there will likely be out-of-core implementation of this because it's very, it's very useful. You have basically the binding, which is a serializer, and that's the reason why I have been removed, because there are a lot of serializers in Python world, and having another serializer, which does uh, exactly the same thing, is, is redundant. And you pass it a model, a field you want to serialize, and then you, um, you add this stream attribute. Streams are the sub-channels uh, that are used by the, the multiplexer. The multiplexer allows is basically a concept in in communication, you can put more uh, signals basically in the same in the same beam or whatever. In this case, in the same channel, you can put different kind of uh, messages, and 
with, the multi with multiplexer and demultiplexer, you can combine this. This allows to create more general consumers. That's basically the reason for the multiplexer. And in this case, it's very simple. I just map a single consumer to a stream, which is actually a, a string, and I usually and I declare um, a group. And that's all. Uh, data binding uses, uses Django signals to notify the users. So whenever a document is updated, the, the data binding uh, picks the message, creates the serialization according to these to this fields, and it sends to this channel, to this, uh, sorry, to this group by using the, the multiplexer. The multiplexer are normal consumers, so you just put, sorry, so you just put on the, on the routing like this. I just used two, the two different syntax, but they're equivalent. On the front end, you use a slightly different function, which is the multiplex instead of listen, because you have to take the, the stream into account. But other than that, it's the same thing. You get the, di the data, and by using HTML noti notification, we can send a notification back to the, back to the users. And so, uh, this is, a, I hope it's not been too fast, but you can have a look at, uh, at the application, which I commented a lot, so hopefully it will be useful anyway. And now, Channels 2. Uh, Channels 2 brings a lot of, it's basically a completely new project, because it's based on a SyncIO. This means it is it's Python 3.5 only, while Channels works on Python 2.7. And you can mix synchronous and asynchronous code in the same consumer and with Django code, and this is great. I mean, you can define async def and then a synchronous function, and the other method is, is synchronous. And this allows to make much more complex things because one of the uh, channels is, is very limited in some way, in, in a good way, but it's, it's limited anyway. And the other big, big thing is that now the protocol termination is done in the same process as Django runs and uh, where the consumer runs. Because in channels one, you have a protocol server, a process, and you have multiple workers. And this brings, obviously, much more infrastructure uh, complexities. And uh, with channels two, this is superseded. And the other big thing is that uh, you have need to reduce this slightly, um, you can uh, have persistency of your consumer across the whole connection. So you can store stuff on the consumer. And then you have middlewares, which works slightly like Django ones, so can filter uh, incoming connections be before passing to, them, to the consumer. And it's all, all the building blocks of channels are now SGI, so you can mix and match together and with a more um, flexible approach. Uh, being a complete rewrite, a lot of function, a lot of features have been removed. Uh, many of them will not come back. Many has, some has not really gone away, like group, you don't have anymore the group class, but group concept is, is there, obviously. And some, hopefully, will return soon, like the, the multiplexer. So, I have my channels one code, how, uh, how hard it would be to rewrite? Uh, not too much, uh, because the complex part you are, you are really writing, the consumers, are remained almost the same. There are things, something that has changed, but not really uh, dramatically, so it's not a big deal. Uh, you have to write your test completely, because it works completely different, and routing is a bit more complex, but not really that, that hard. Uh, very brief FAQ. Uh, how is performance? Yeah, quite good. Uh, it scales. It, the, 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 the thing in Django, you care about performances, but it's not the most performant framework in the world. Uh, there are more other things that are valued, and so goes for, for channels. But if you need more performance, you can scale your workers because you can use multiple workers anyway. And deployments, you have two different, you can use two different deployments. You can get rid of WSGI completely and uh, 
put Daphne in front of everything. Daphne will run uh, channels and uh, Django. Or you can run Django in with your WSGI server like usually, and then map uh, web sockets to a different path and pass it to, to Daphne. I use the second option because I like micro WSGI and I, I, I use a lot of its, its features. So, wrap it up. Uh, with channel, I've never written asynchronous code before channels, and I find very easy to write one. And because also because it uses the Django API, you can use the Django API, you can use everything from, from Django and channels, and you don't have to deal with asynchronous, really. Thank you. I don't know if there is more time for questions. We have a little bit of time for one or two questions. Raise your hand if you want to ask something. We're here. Um, hi, um, thanks for the talk. Um, just the pop-up when Fry logged in, is that required for all WebSockets? After Sorry? The, the pop-up on yep. the left, that you have to, there's no way around getting the user to click OK. You, you can you can just close it. You don't. You're not required to click on it and open a page. You can just close it. There are the usual the usual um, notifications that Google Calendar etc. uses now. So it's pretty standard. Okay, so you can still use the page. Just don't click OK. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey, so. Uh, this is a really convenient thing, but uh, I'm a bit uh, afraid of doing this in production. So is Daphne the only server right now available for uh, ASGI? Um, or is there, for instance, a Apache module for uh, ASGI or something not, like that? Not that I know of. And Daphne, I, I think it's really the best option you have because it's... it's it's channels, basically, so it's developed by, by the same people, and it's the default uh, environment they, they test it and they work on, so it's, uh, it's really the, the best option at the moment. And I, I don't know if there are any, uh, any other uh, protocol server for WebSockets. Uh, for, uh, there are other protocol server for SGI implementing protocols other than, than WebSockets, and that's one of the cool thing about channels, you are not focused, um, forced to use WebSocket, you can use any protocol you want. Thank you very much. Well, let's do one more question. Uh, does it only work with Django? Because Django is not in the name, so would it, uh, for example, also work with Flask? Or? Uh, it requires Django to, uh, I mean, uh, if you, if uh, at the moment, it's, it's tied to, to Django. You don't need to use Django code in, in the consumers. So if you have a Flask application, you can just set up a very tiny Django project just to run um, Flask, uh, sorry, just, just run channels. And then in the consumers, just use the, the Flask libraries you are, you are using. But the idea, the idea of the ASGI protocol is that this is not really completely logically tied to, to Django. So you can have Daphne running, uh, running the, the consumers and your own Flask or whatever application uh, running on, uh, on WSGI that handles all the synchronous part. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.